again confirms if we fear the Lord, we will have strong confidence. And if we have strong confidence, our children will have a place of refuge. And place of refuge is none other than Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no other place of refuge except Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What a confirmation of scriptures God is giving us this morning. When you fear the Lord, it will separate you from evil. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 6 says, In mercy and truth atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. Amen. If anybody again, I'm telling you, we are struggling from some sort of evil. Today is the day that uh, we can choose uh, to pray and ask for forgiveness and repent of our sins. God is saying that by mercy and truth, atonement for iniquity has been already provided. Amen. Hallelujah. When you fear the Lord, you will be untouched by trouble. Say that I am going to be untouched by trouble. I am going to be untouched. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 19 verse 23 says, The fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rest contain untouched by trouble. Amen. If you choose to fear the Lord, you will be untouched by any kind of trouble and all will be well with you. Amen. When you fear the Lord, God will answer your prayers. Amen. Psalm 145 verse 19 says, He will fulfill the desire of those who fear Him. What does it mean? God is going to answer all your prayers if you fear Him. He will also hear that cry and say that. Amen. So God is going to answer your prayer if you choose to fear Him today. When you fear the Lord, it will keep you from sin. Exodus chapter 20 verse 20 says, And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. Amen. If God's fear is upon me, if I fear God, I will definitely not sin. Amen. If any sin is there in me, it is because of my temptation towards that. Why? Because I am living in this world. And this world is full of sin. This world is full of trouble. And when I am joining with the people of this world, I get tempted to sin. Amen. Why do people sin in this world? Why there is a lot of trouble in this world? Let us see Romans chapter 3 verse 18 which says there is no fear of God before them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The world sins because there is no fear of God. But you and me cannot sin because we have the fear of God. Hallelujah. God is telling us again through Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 12. When we fear God, all will go well to us. Amen. Tell, I fear God. All will go well. Amen. If you are lacking in this aspect of fearing God so that it may go well with us, today we have an opportunity to cry out like David cried as in Psalms 86 verse 11. Amen. David cried in Psalms 86 verse 11, Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk with thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Amen. If anyone has prayed this prayer today, God has already given you the fear of God anointing. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So this morning we said that if you are righteous, you will all will go well with you. If you fear God, all will go well with you. And now if you keep God's commandment, number three, if you keep God's commandments, all will go well with you. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 29. Oh, that they have such a heart in them that they will fear me. And always keep all my commandments. That is mine be well with them and with the children forever. Amen. It's not going to be well with you. It's going to go well with your children forever. Amen. Not one day or two days or three days. Forever. If you choose to fear God and obey His commandments, all will go well with you. Amen. Next scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 40. Which says, you should therefore keep his statutes and his commandments which I command you today, that it may go well with you and with your children after you. Once again, God is promising you, if you choose to fear me, if you choose to obey my commandments, all will go well with not only you, also with your children forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 1 to 3. <coughs> Sorry. Now this is the commandment. And these are the statutes and judgments which the law of God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. That 
you may fear your God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, you and your son, your grandson, and all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged, the four year old drive, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord God your father has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. If anybody is waiting for land flowing with milk and honey, today is the day to choose to fear God and obey His commandments. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 33 says, You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Amen. What a blessing today to fear God and obey His commandments that all will go well with us. Now the question is, what does it mean to obey God? We read all the scriptures from the Old Testament. We learned that we have to keep the statutes and laws, whatever. I want to show you what Jesus answered with regard to obeying all the commandments. Let us see what Mark chapter 1 verse 15 says. This is the word of Jesus. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Amen. Believing the gospel is one of the obedience which we are showing to God. Amen. Keep God's commandments means believe in the gospel. Amen. Repent and believe in the gospel is one of the obedience which we are showing. So obeying God means we repent of our sins and we accept and believe what God is telling us to do. Amen. Mark 12, 29 to 31 says, The most important one answered Jesus is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your Lord, God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Amen. Obeying God means to love God and one another and that our actions show our love for God and for one another. If you want to know more about faith and deeds, go home and read James chapter 2. Then you will know what does it mean to show in action. Romans chapter 12 verse 10 says, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Amen. So God is telling us to honor one another above ourselves. Amen. If you are not doing, today is the day that we can choose to do it and all can be well with us. Amen. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, we all know the scripture very well. For which reason our pastor Sam and family has gone to Africa to preach the gospel to all the nations. Amen. That is also one of the commandments. God is calling you and me to follow. Obedience to God's word means go and preach the gospel. Go and share the good news to everyone. Don't keep it to yourselves. Share it with others. In one of the places, in 1 Corinthians, I don't remember the scripture, Paul says, Woe unto me if I do not preach the gospel. Amen. So today, we choose to obey God through preaching the gospel. Amen. 1 John chapter 5 verse 3 says that this is the love for God to obey His commandments and His commandments for God. Amen. So we have read a lot of commandments of God this morning and I am sure that none of us are seeing any commandments as burdensome for us. That is why the scripture is very clear that God's commandments are not burdensome so we can obey. So this morning we said that if you are righteous all will go well with you. If you fear God all will go well with you. If you keep God's commandments, all will go well with you. And number four commandment is for today, all are your parents, all will go well with you. Amen. I'm telling you, this commandment is not only for Amona or Jessica or Monica or Abriana, whoever sitting, small children sitting here. This commandment is for every elderly person of the church. Because this is God's commandment. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 16 says, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Also let us see what Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 3 says. Amen. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise. That it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Amen. It's not going to only well with you. 
you will live long in the land. Amen. Children, are you listening? All children, can you give a clap of hand to Jesus? <laughs> what does it mean to honor your parents here? Honoring our father and mother is being respectful in word and deeds. Amen. Not only in words that Papa, I love you, Mama, I love you. You have to show it in action. Amen. Your attitude uh, towards them. Amen. You have to honor them in a very high esteem. I tell you, I may not agree with the president of the country's rule or decisions or whatever he is telling us, but still we respect him as the leader of the nation. Amen. It is the same to honor our parents. We may not like it sometimes. We may not uh, always uh, like to obey what they say. But this is God's commandments to honor parents. If you want everything to go well with you, honor your parents. Amen. Similarly, children of all ages should honor their parents. God also values honoring parents so much. That's why I think he has included it in the Ten Commandments. Amen. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. We all know, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the Ten Commandments of God. And while preparing this message, I learned one new scripture about Rechabites. Amen. Rechabites honoring their parents. I might have read it before, but the scripture blessed me so much while preparing this message. And so I added the scripture here from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 35, verse 18 and 19. And Jeremiah said to us of the Rechabites, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Because you have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab, your father, and kept all his precepts and done according to all that he commanded you, the poor, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not lack a man to stand before me forever. Amen. Hallelujah. What a revelation I got while preparing this message. I want to share it with you. This scripture in the verse 19, it says, The son of Rechab shall not lack a man to stand before me forever. Today, I said, Lord, I am honoring my parents. I help them. Amen. When I am honoring my parents, I will not lack another generation to stand before in this pulpit to minister unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the revelation God gave me. That you will not lack a man to stand before me forever. Today I am standing before God at ministry. Amen. I will not lack my generation, next generation, come and stand. Amen. They will obviously come and stand if I choose to honor my parents. Amen. Amen. The same goes for you also. Hallelujah. In contrast, we can see that God's wrath is poured upon godless and wicked nation, wicked mankind. Amen. In the book of Romans, uh, chapter 1, I saw the scriptures talk, where the scripture talks about godlessness and uh, wicked mankind. Disobedience to parents is also included along with murderers, ruthless people. Amen. This scripture I want to read from the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 13. Which says, slanderers, God-haters, insolent.